doctrine of Balaam. Um, in Revelation uh, 2 verse 14, it speaks about this. It says, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. You have them who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Hmm. The doctrine of Balaam. Now, you see, the church of Paganum is scolded for tolerating the teaching of Balaam or the doctrine of Balaam. Now, Balaam's name is also invoked in uh, 2 Peter 2.15. And I want to show you this first before I explain exactly what is this all about. 2 Peter 2 verses 15. We can see this one. Um, which have forsaken the right way. You see, that doctrine is something going astray. Which have forsaken the right way. And are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. The way of Balaam or the doctrine of Balaam. Mm -hmm. So they loved what? The wages of unrighteousness. So Balaam, Balaam. Uh, in, in all these warnings, and also, let me just show you one more warning, yeah, which uh, talks about Balaam also. In the book of Jude 1, verses 11, it also speaks about this, this, this warning. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. Hmm, it has to do with something like a reward. And perished in the gainsaying of Kor. Balaam, Balaam, Balaam. So, in both warnings about the conduct and message of false teachers, because Balaam was a prophet, okay, all of these are references to the Old Testament character of Balaam, who tried unsuccessfully to prophesy against the people of Israel. Remember in Numbers 22? And he eventually advised King Balak of Moab who was the enemy of Israel, to pursue a campaign of seduction against them. And uh, the doctrine of Balaam is not only a serious problem, but is a devious one. When the frontal assault failed, Balaam took a backdoor approach. You see, God told him, don't curse the children of Israel. They are already blessed. He tried and tried and tried because he wanted to gain some money. From the, 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 the uh, King Balak, the king of Moab. And uh, after that, when he saw it could not work, and uh, he could not be able to curse the children of Israel because he had to say what God is telling him. And uh, the moment he's going to curse them, God tells them, go and bless them. He goes and says, no, I want to curse them today. No, go and bless them. So he was always blessing them. When, when he saw this was not working, he told the king, uh, king Balak, that uh, I think the only way is these people mix up, mix up and, uh, and uh, sin against God, which was ungodly. Look in the book of Numbers 31, 8, what happened? Numbers 31, verses 8, C. And they slew the kings of Midian beside the rest of them that were slain, namely Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, Reba, five kings of Midian, Balaam, also the son of Beor, they slew with a sword. You see, the Bible is very clear about this. Let me just show you first verse 9. And the children of Israel took all the women of Midian captives and their little ones and took the spoil of all the cattle and all the flocks and all their goods and they burnt all their cities wherein they dwelt and all their godly, goodly castles with fire. The, God always brings judgment whenever you are someone who is going against the gospel and you want to teach something else for filthy lucre. And most of these prosperity gospels 
that you're seeing, they are walking in the way of Balaam. Because Balaam, being a prophet from Mesopotamia, was willing to use his God-given talents for illicit purposes. Even though he knew Balak was God's enemy, okay, he tried to sell his prophetic gifts, gifts to help him. When that didn't work, Balaam cancelled Balak on the most effective way to weaken Israel. That was uh, through seduction, through uh, using Moabites and Midianites women to tempt the Israelites into sexual relationships and into pagan rituals. The Israelites who participated brought God's judgment upon themselves. Judgment came upon themselves. Why? Because Balaam wanted money. He wanted to have a good, uh, you know, payment. He was a false prophet, prosperity gospel. That is what he was teaching. You see what kind of a, 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 a thing happened to the children of Israel? Let me show you. 25 verses 1. See what happened to the children of Israel. This is called the sin of Peor, okay? And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit Hodom with the daughters of Moab. This is a Balaam who initiated this kind of thing so that God can curse Israel. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself into Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Okay, And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the hearts of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun. And the fierce anger of the Lord may, may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. You see the judgments? They were slain. The, the, and behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought into his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all congregation and the children of Israel who were weeping before the Lord of the tabernacle of congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into his tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were 24,000. 24,000 people died because of Balaam. Balaam, instead of telling, uh, doing what is right, he went in the, in the way of pleasing the world because he wanted money. King Balak wanted God to curse Israel, but it was not possible. So the only way that they de derived is to make sure that Israelites, they intermarry or they, they, get, they, they mix up with the Midianite women. All right? Midianite and Moabite women so that they commit fornication with them and then God can be angry with them. You see how money, when you're a prosperity gospel preacher, you want to fix up the world with the church, how much repercussions is there? And that's what we call the doctrine or the way of Balaam. And according to 2 Peter 2.15, Balaam's way is a choice to promote falsehood for financial reasons. According to Jude, where I've read 1 verse 11, Balaam's error was his willingness to com uh, accommodate pagan beliefs out of greed. And Jude 1 verse 4 also refers to the sin of those who pervert the grace of our God to a license for immorality. Let me show you. Jude is the same, same thing. The same, same thing. Jude 1 uh, verses 4. Okay. is the same thing which the Bible tells us. Don't go in this way of Balaam. If you're a preacher, preach what is true. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace, you see, you turn the grace of God into lasciviousness 
and denying the Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is also a trait, one trait of, the, of those people who pervert the gospel, the grace of God. They are going in the way of Balaam. If you find yourself, you're in a church whereby they're talking money, money, money. Ask yourself, is that preacher going in the way of Balaam? Ask yourself, because one trait of false teachers in the church is that they attempt to turn Christian liberty into freedom, into some freedom. And this freedom is, 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 is turned to be like promiscuous, okay? According to God, it's like, when you see the church trying to join up with the world and trying to pull up the traits of the world, you will see there is something really wrong with the church. Because the Bible tells us in Romans 14, 1. Romans 14, verses 1. See, it speaks about this clearly to verse 5. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but do not uh, but not to doubtful dis disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let him not that heated uh, despise him that eateth not, and let him not which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God has received him. For who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth, yea, he shall be holden up. For God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another, another one esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be persuaded in his own mind. You see, the Bible tells us, let every man be persuaded in his own mind. But if you're a prosperity preacher there, who is trying to persuade people in a certain thing, which God is not talking to them in their minds and telling them this is the right way. You're trying to persuade them into something which is false and out of way. Then you're sinning against God. Why? Because the Bible tells us very well here that every man should be fully persuaded in his own mind. Who persuades in the man? in the mind it is the holy spirit the holy spirit speaks to us every day he tells us this is good this is wrong this is good this is wrong but when you push people in not in what is good but pushing them in what is evil then um you're doing what is wrong okay so putting these ideas together gives us a clear view of the doctrine or the way of balaam it is the attitude that one can fully cooperate with the world and still serve God. But that's not the nature. Because the Bible tells us, be ye holy for I am holy. What is holy? Holy means separate. Be ye separated for I am separated. The doctrine of Balaam teaches compromise, wanting Christians to forget that they are called to be separate and holy. Okay? They forget that. We are called to be separate. Go and read Leviticus 20 verse 26. We are supposed to be separated. And also 1 Peter 1 verses 2. Go and read that. Because the doctrine of Balaam makes believers indistinguishable from the unbelieving world. Have you ever gone to these prosperity churches and you wonder who is now, who is speaking the truth? Who is who? I'm really confused. You go to these churches, you, the, the way the world is behaving, they are also behaving the same. You look at some of these huge, huge mega churches, people are behaving in all manner of things. There are people with, uh, you know, others are saying, oh, I'm of, uh, 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 they, they are changing themselves. Instead of being a man, they say, I'm a woman and a woman to a man. And others, they are saying, they are doing all the kind of evil things. And you, and you cannot really distinguish who is who. That is unlike the Bible. Because the Bible tells us very well, we should be distinguished, Okay. And, and uh, let, let me show you this. Let me show you this. In Matthew 5.13, Matthew 5.13, see something here. The Bible says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savour, wherewith shall be salted? It is therefore good for nothing, but you be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men hide 
uh, light a candle and put it under a brush, but, the, but on a candlestick that it gives light to all that are in, that are in the house. Now, if you are the light of the world and you're, you are the, 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 what people are looking on, how can, you, how can you mix yourself with the world? How can you be like the world? That is what we call the way of Balaam. And when you see people preaching and, and telling you to be like them, come on, just be like them. You see, many come and say, oh, you see, Paul says I have become all things in order uh, to save some. But he didn't, Paul did not become like the world. He mixed up with the world to become a light of the world. Jesus mixed up with sinners, but did he become a sinner? No. No, he didn't become a sinner. He preached to those sinners in a wherever, if it was bars or where, in the prostitutes, and he talked to them and preached to them. And that's exactly how we are supposed to be. We're not supposed to follow the doctrine of Balaam because the doctrine of Balaam is a belief that a little sin doesn't hurt. A little sin doesn't hurt. Especially if there are some financial or benefits are allowed. You see what the Bible says here in Galatians, Galatians uh, uh, 5, 9, 5 verses 9, see, Galatians 5, 9. It says, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. You see, just a little leaven, we live in what? The whole lump. And also 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy uh, verses 6, 5, 6 verses 5. See, he also speaks about the same thing. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such, withdraw yourself. Are you, are you in the church for gain? Are you a pastor or are you a believer out there who preaches because he wants money? Or are you someone who takes the word of God for filthy lucre because you want you're thinking that gain is godliness. Have you seen this kind of people who want to show people that uh, uh, as long as you have money, you're, 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 you're godly. It's like godliness. is. Uh, come on. God does not teach us those kind of things. It's not about the money. It's about how well you are in the doctrine of Christ, the gospel of grace. It's not about the money. Please run away from this kind of people because a person following the doctrine of Balaam is willing to compromise his beliefs for the sake of economics. He acts to enable sinful behaviors for personal gain or even participate in them. And that is not what the Bible teaches us. We should not participate in these kind of things. Romans 1, 32. We should not participate run away from prosperity gospel who knowing the judgment of god and they and that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them you see this kind of people they not only know that it is wrong to do this kind of things but they have pleasure even if they know those who enjoy this prosperity kind of gospel they are worthy of death but they enjoy they enjoy so much in practical terms in practical terms the teaching of or the doctrine of balaam it is the view that christians can or even should compromise their convictions for the sake of popularity money sexual gratification or personal gain it is the attitude that treats sin as no big deal you just don't care it's okay yeah it's just some um, just a little sin, no problem. Yeah? Christians can't and shouldn't participate in these kind of things. They should totally shun the presence of sinners or unbelievers. Because that is what the Bible has told us. Okay? Let me, let me show you just a couple of verses as I wind up. In the book of Luke, in the book of Luke 7 verse 34 it tells us that we should stay away from that the son of man is come eating and drinking and you say behold a gluttonous man and a wine bibler a friend of publicans and sinners now what is the bible trying to tell us here jesus is mixing up with these people but he's not like them and this is what people should understand 
And when prosperity gospel, they look at places where Jesus was mixed up with sinners. They think it's all about being like them. No, Jesus mixed up with these people. But was he like them? Was he a wine babbler? Yes, he was a friend of them. But was he working and doing things like, like them? No, no. We are obligated to stand up for the truth. Let's stand up for the truth. Ephesians, Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 4 verses 25. The Bible tells us let's stand for the truth. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak, speak to every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. We should speak truth and have righteousness. Just go and read Proverbs 23 verse 20. I don't have time to read all that. Romans 14 20, 22. And also read that we should also be practicing goodness. Read 2 Peter 1 5 and Matthew uh, 5 16. And we should practice this whether people want to hear or they don't want to hear. Okay? Go and read John 4, 16 to 18 and uh, John uh, 8, 11 and Acts uh, 24, 24 to 25. You will see that we are supposed to do what is right and not to walk in the way of Balaam. The doctrine of Balaam, it's a prosperity doctrine. And it wants to do what is wrong for the sake of money. Please don't be like this prosperity people. Stay with the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding why and how Jesus died. The Bible tells us that Christ died for our sins. And he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He died for our sins. That's the reason why he died. And how did he die? By shedding his blood. What will be the reason? Because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Okay? Why should the blood be shed? Leviticus 17.11, it tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood to make atonement upon the altar for your souls. So, if the life is in the is in the blood, so why would we remove the blood? Why do we need to have someone die? Because the book uh, of Romans tells us that the wages of sin is death and that we are all sinners. No one is holy, so we deserve to die. But 2,000 years ago, a man named Jesus, while he was still sinners, he died for us. So that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Are you believing in him? If you believe what I've told you, all you need to do is just to tell Jesus what you've believed in a prayer. Tell him, Lord Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins, that you were buried and rose again, as is written in the scriptures. I believe this and I accept that payment for sin, that atonement that you shed for me. Thank you. Become my Lord and my Savior. And once, my friends, if you have said that and uh, you have believed in your heart, then you're saved. You're saved. There's nothing else. And don't go in the way of these prosperity gospels. Don't be like them. Don't be like them. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can like this video and also you can share to your friends so that they can be able to understand. And also likewise, please, you can subscribe to watch more videos which we post every day. And we also, uh, in the com in the, in the um, description session, we also have other channels that we have kindly go and check them out because it will be a blessing also to us. God bless you and have a great time.